In this lab demonstration, we will examine how we ping between devices using Cisco Packet Tracer. In this example, I have connected a end device, which is a PC, to a Cisco router using a crossover cable, this cable right here. And I have used the uh, port G00 and have, have assigned the IP addresses uh, as shown on this diagram. This PC has the IP address of 192.168.1.5 with the default gateway of 192.168.1.4. And this router, uh, if we go in there, uh, you will see uh, that we have assigned the IP address of 192.168.1.4 uh, with the sub, same subnet mask, uh, the proper subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0 on the port 00, which is now connected to this end device PC 0. What we're going to do now is we're going to examine the ping command between this router and this PC. And on PCs, just like any Windows PC, what you do actually, we go and open the command prompt. And you can simply ping by entering ping 192.168.1.4 because that's the port that associated with this router right here that we have created. And we're gonna click enter and that will go ahead and ping that port. This is how you do it on almost every single Windows machine since like Windows XP and onward. Uh, even prior to that, uh, that's how you ping from a Windows machine. Uh, we just go ping and then go 192.168.1.4 and that will result in pinging this particular port. On a Cisco device, if you were to ping from here to the uh, end device, what you can do, uh, there are a couple of options. So when you first enter the router, uh, you will be in this uh, mode where we basically have that arrow key. And you can simply go ping and enter 192.168.1.5 and that will result in a ping between your router and that end device. And here it shows a ping success rate of 5 out of 5. So it sent out 5 pings and it returns uh, back uh, that 5 pings. Notice that on the Windows machine, by default, it sent four pings, one, two, three, four pings when you ping a device or a port. In this case, I'm pinging the port of this router. But on a Cisco device, by default, we send five pings instead of four pings. This is due to the configuration of how the Cisco device's iOS works versus how the Windows PCs works. And I have covered this in my one of my lectures and you can go ahead and watch that on my YouTube channel. And it has, uh, you know, there is no significant why there is four pings here and the five pings here. We just need to know that the Cisco devices would by default ping five times. In addition to general ping command, Cisco devices also has the extended ping mode or extended ping command built into their iOS platform. To access that, what you need to do is you need to enter the privilege mode. To enter the privilege mode, you can type enable or en and hit enter. You know you are in privilege mode because this sign has changed from this greater than sign to this pound sign. That means you are in privilege mode. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter ping, but instead of entering the IP address, which is the destination IP address we're trying to ping, which is 192.168.1.5. After entering ping, we're just gonna hit enter. That will give you a series of prompts where you can change the configuration of this particular ping command. The very first prompt you get is for the protocol type, and by default, it is set to IP. We know this because in here we have these square brackets and inside those square brackets we have the uh, default value that is set to this particular option. In here the protocol default value is set as IP. 
The other option you can use is CLNS, uh, Novel, uh, and a bunch of other types, but we will not look into that in this video. So if you want to keep this default value, you can leave this option as blank and hit enter. So anytime you have a default value, if you do not want to change that default value, if you hit enter on your keyboard, it will automatically take that default value as the option we will be using in this particular ping. And the next option we get is the target IP address. This is the IP address that we're gonna ping from this device, in this case, the router. Notice that the target IP address doesn't have a default value. That means you must give an IP address in order for this device to ping. That makes sense because reason that is this is the source that is trying to ping a device, a remote device, and it has to know which are target IP that it will be using. In this example, we will be using the PC0 for our target and it has an IP address of 192.168.1.5. So that's what we're gonna enter that. And then we're gonna press enter. The next prompt is for the repeat count. The repeat count specify the number of ping packets that will be sent to the destination address when the ping is sent out. So that means how many pings or ICMP packets will be sent out from this router, which is the source, towards the target address, which is the destination address, which is PC0. In here, by default, it is set to five. But for our example, I'm gonna change that default value to something else. And remember, if you hit enter here, the default value will be used. But because we are changing the value now, it's gonna be set to whatever the value you're gonna enter. So I'm gonna send the value set the value as 50 so we're going to send 50 icmp packets between this router and pc and then we're going to press enter the next prompt prompt is the datagram size so datagram size is set to 100 by default the datagram size specify the size of the ping packet in bytes sent from this device to the destination. So each pin packet right now, if I just enter, hit enter, will have 100 bytes sent from this device, which is the router, to the destination. There are reasons why we, you may want to increase the datagram size. Uh, I will not go into depth of why you need to do that. But for this example, I'm gonna increase the dat datagram size. But let's say you don't know what value you can be entered in this datagram size. So imagine I enter one and press enter. It will give you a helpful error message sometimes when you enter an invalid value. So datagram size can only be between 36 and 18,024. So because I have entered one instead of between entering a value between 36 and 18,024, it gave me a helpful error message saying a decimal number between 36 and 1,824 must be entered. So it cannot be below 36 or above 18,024. So sometimes Cisco IOS has the ability to give you a very helpful error messages which the system administrators can be used uh, to determine a, a error in input. In this case, I enter a one and it found an error and it gave a helpful message. So we're gonna increase the datagram size to 150, which falls between the 36 and 18,024 range. And if I hit enter now, it accepted that value. So we're gonna have a datagram size in these ping packets, these ping packets of 150 bytes. Next, we have the timeout in seconds. The timeout in seconds specify the timeout interval, which is set to default uh, value of two seconds, which is the echo reply that needs to be received between that period once a success, uh, once a ping has been sent. 
So in order for the ping to be considered as successful, what's going to happen is it's going to send a ping out and you're going to wait for two seconds for the reply. And if this does not receive the reply back at the router's end, it within two seconds, it's going to uh, consider that ping as a failure. So I'm going to increase the request timeout to five seconds just for this example. And I'm going to press enter. What, what that is going to do is when it, it send out a ping to the end device, in this case PC0 at 192.168.1.5, it's going to wait maximum of five seconds for the echo reply to see if the ping is successful. As opposed to by default, it was two seconds. Then the next option, it's going to ask you whether uh, you would like to enter the extended uh, mode. First, I'm going to go without the extended mode. Next time, uh, I'm going to quickly show you what's uh, available in the extended mode. So now we're going to skip the extended uh, commands. Uh, in few seconds, I will show you in this particular video, uh, you know, how you can, uh, you know, uh, go into the extended mode. So we're going to press enter. And it's going to ask you to sweep a uh, range of sizes. So that specify the size of the ping echo packets that are sent. And this parameter is used to determine the maximum size of MTUs configured on the nodes along with the destination address. And typically by default, it is sent to no. And I'm not gonna change anything here right now. I'm simply gonna press enter. But th this is the option where you can change the MTU size. So if I press enter now, what's gonna happen, it's gonna send 50 pings to destination 192.168.1.5 with the request timeout of five seconds. And right now we have a success rate of 100%. So all the 50 pings went through. Next, I'm gonna show you the extended commands. So let's go again and we'll enter ping. Remember in iOS, you can use the arrow key to move up and down with your previous entries. So I'm just gonna move up and then enter the same ping command we enter right here without the IP address to enter to the, uh, that extended ping mode. And here we're gonna leave the protocol IP same as before. And we're gonna ping the same one before as uh, well. So it's 192.168.1.5. And we're going to re uh, increase the uh, repeat count uh, uh, from uh, just default value of five. Again, we're going to increase this time, let's say, uh, to 20. So just to make it different. And we're going to change the datagram size from 150 to, let's say, 120. And request timeout, we're going to put 10 seconds instead of five, just to be different. And here's what we're going to do. In here, for extended commands, I'm going to say yes. To do yes, uh, to enter enter yes, we're going to simply put Y because remember by default, we have no N in this uh, square brackets. We're going to enter Y to go into the extended commands and we're going to press enter. Now we have a couple of other ex extra options that you can configure with this ping. So the very first option called the source or address interface. So if this router has multiple devices connected, so right now it only has one device connected at the port G00, you can pick which source this ping must be sent out. So let's, uh, let's say if I pick a, pick a PC and I'm gonna connect a device using a crossover cable. So I'm gonna enter ethernet 01 and we're gonna connect to this PC, right? So now, assuming this channel, uh, this link is uh, up, currently it's down, uh, I will show you how to put link up and down in a separate video. What's going to happen when I send this ping, if there is no source uh, address uh, or interface is pick, it will send out that ping from every single port that is currently up in this router. So in here, with the source so, uh, interface, uh, um, designation, what we can do actually, we can designate or specify the interface or the IP address of the router that gonna use to send that ping packets. Instead of flooding the pings everywhere on the network, when you have a router with a busy network, you can specify exactly what port it needs to go out to. 
So if you have a corporate network or if you have a complex network with a whole bunch of things happening in this router, to minimize the overhead, you can make sure that the ping is only sent out from that G00 interface. And you can do that by entering that information. For now, because I only have one um, interface um, turned on, I'm just gonna leave it as blank, uh, which is default, which is gonna send the ping out in every available interface. So we're gonna press enter. And it's gonna ask the next um, extended option is the type of service. So type of service currently set to zero, uh, which is the uh, option that you can use to set the internet service quality. Again, I will go into depth of this in a later um, um, demonstration, but for now we're gonna leave it blank. I just want you to see what are the options available in this extended commands. So we're gonna press enter. So the next one is uh, uh, DF bit in the IP header, uh, which specify whether or not uh, uh, DON fragment or DF uh, will be set uh, in this particular packet. And it is by um, default is set to no, DON fragment it. Again, I will not go into depth. I just want to let you know these are the options that are available in the extended command. And we're gonna press enter. And the next one is the validate uh, reply data. Uh, again, it specify whether or not to validate the data, which is set to no uh, by default. Um, I'm gonna leave it as default for now. I'm just showing you the options that are available. And here we can specify the data pattern, uh, which specify the uh, patterns that will be used to uh, troubleshoot uh, framing errors of that data frame that we are sending between the router and the PC zero. Again, I'm gonna leave it as at blank. And the next option is loose trick uh, records, timestamp, uh, verbose. Uh, that gives you the uh, header specification for the IP um, packet header that we are sending. Again, I will describe this in detail on a different video, but these are the options that are available. And again, the same option came up as above here, the sweep size range, and we're gonna leave it as blank and we're gonna press enter and it's gonna send that packet out. And here we have a 100% success rate. I just want you to know these options for now uh, as a beginner to network engineering or network technical systems. Uh, I will go in detail about uh, some of the other options on a later video. So that's how Cisco extended ping and Cisco ping uh, works uh, on this router. And we also look at how the Windows ping works from this PC uh, in this video as well. If you have any questions or concerns regarding uh, this demo lab demonstration, please feel free to leave a comment below. I know this is a quick brief demonstration and I will go into detail with much more complex lab demonstration with Cisco Packet Tracer in the near future. Until next time, please subscribe to this channel and thumbs up this video. Have a nice day.